Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over your first frost forecast for 2021 into 2022. We're going to be talking about when you average your first temperatures below 36 degrees, uh, which is typically when frost occurs. We're going to be first looking at that and then we're going to be talking about whether I think your frost will become early, will come earlier or later uh, than average. Now, before we do get into it, I just want to say that we do have many other uh, longer range forecasts on this channel as of right now. We have your August forecast, your fall forecast, your fall foliage forecast, your winter forecast, total snowfall forecast, first snowfall forecast, and now your first frost forecast. So all of those are on the channel. You can go watch all of them, uh, and they're just uh, in the previous, uh, the, the, the recent videos. Uh, so if you go to the recent videos on my channel, you'll see those up there. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. I answer all of my comments uh, no matter what video it's on so if you have a question for this video or you have one for let's say my winter forecast or my fall forecast just leave it in that video and I'll definitely respond to you guys with within a couple uh, of hours of you posting it so getting right into it here Here's the map of average first frost. So uh, we're going to uncover what each individual layer uh, indicates. Uh, but this is going to be showing you from uh, north to south when we normally see our first frost. It's September 1st or earlier. So this is any anywhere where we're dealing with the first frost or the first temperature below 36 degrees being in August. Some of these areas have not really a defined date of last frost because they're normally seeing it pretty much uh, year round. They're normally below 36 degrees almost year round with the exception of maybe late July, early August. Uh, so other than that, most of these areas are dealing with temperatures below 36 degrees at some point mainly due to elevation. You can see that in parts of the Rockies and areas like Oregon, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and also some parts of Colorado. September 1st through 30th in this pink shade, which covers a good majority of the country that covers much of the inner mountain west, as well as for the northern plains, the upper Midwest, the upper Great Lakes, and some pockets of the northeast, uh, including some parts of the Smoky Mountains, a little bit of northern Pennsylvania, as well as much of upstate New York, uh, and pretty much the entirety of northern New England, except for the coastal areas. So these are the areas where we're dealing with our first frost, uh, which again, typically occurs when you're below low 36 degrees Fahrenheit before uh, the end of September so uh, these areas are still fairly early on uh, and this is when I would say once you get your first frost you know that it's at least entering the chilly time this is when you're going to have to start probably wearing a light jacket at this point when you're stepping outside so this is when you know that uh, late fall uh, or even winter is approaching quite quickly I would say probably right around uh, two to four weeks after your first frost is when you're going to normally get your first snowfall. So uh, when you get your first frost, it's a sign that winter is coming uh, and that we, we, definitely still ha we, st we definitely have to keep an eye out for any winter weather events. October 1st through 15th, uh, you can see that in that darker purple shade, which is uh, including parts of the northwest for a little bit of eastern Washington, as well as much of the southwest, especially as you get further north up into northern Arizona, southern Utah, northern uh, New Mexico. You see that line moves through the central plains into parts of the lower Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, and then also into the rest of the northeast, where you have, uh, you have your first frost annually and on average average between October 1st and October 15th. So again, this is an average uh, using data from 1981 to 2010. So again, we don't know exactly when that's going to happen each year. Uh, and just to give you an example, if your first frost was uh, this year, uh, October 15th, and last year it was September 15th, you're going to get an average of October 1st, even though uh, they happened on very different days. They happened almost a month apart. So this is an average. It's picking the number that's right in the middle, uh, and that would be your average first date of first frost. So uh, again, this is just an average. There are many anomalies and most years we're going to we're definitely not going to see it but uh with, within that exact date you're probably going to be one or two or three days off from that date but normally it is fairly close to the average uh the average first frost uh, first frost the date October 16th through 30th, if you live in this light purple zone, you can see that for parts of the northwest except for parts of coastal Oregon uh, as well as coastal uh, California 
you see that uh, light pink or light purple area uh, continue to move on through the central and southern plains into parts of the Ozarks, the mid-Mississippi River Valley, into the Tennessee Valley, through the southern part of the Appalachians, and then up through the mid-Atlantic there, uh, where we have your average first frost between October 16th and October 30th. So to round out the month in October, you normally see your average first frost within this light purple area. November 1st through 15th uh, within these dark blue areas. So this is when you're getting your first frost. Uh, your first freeze is probably going to be about 10, 15 days later uh, than this in most areas. Some areas it happens where your first frost is also your first freeze, uh, which your first freeze would be uh, below 32 degrees. Your first hard freeze would be below 28 degrees. And just something that I want to clarify you're going to start to see that uh, over, especially in September, you're going to start to see this a little bit more where you start to see frost advisories, freeze warnings, hard freeze warnings uh, pop up. And I'm just going to quickly explain what each of those means. For, or for a frost advisory, that's uh, where you're getting temperatures below 36 degrees. If you have a freeze warning, and that means that temperatures are expected to be below 32 degrees. And if you have a hard freeze warning, and that's where you're looking at uh, temperatures getting below 28 degrees. And once you get your hard freeze warning, that's when you know you're really in winter. Uh, there's really no more days where it's going to be a little bit mild or a little bit warmer. Uh, you're really in the thick of things uh, and you're really into winter once you get that first hard freeze warning. And if you get a hard freeze watch or a freeze watch or even a frost watch, which I did see, I believe, one or two times before, it's very rare that they put those out. But if you see that, that's just meaning that there's a high likelihood that three or four days out there will be a frost or a freeze, but it's just too early to put out a warning out as of that point. So that's I just wanted to clarify that, especially for uh, my viewers who are farmers uh, or who have gardens, because this is really important for those people who have uh, gardens or who have farms because frost and freeze can kill plants sometimes so you really need to be paying attention to that if you get that alert just kind of cover your plants or your crops with a tarp or uh, put out some heaters for them and that should help keep them safe from uh, getting damaged from any frost or freeze issues November 1st through 15th, again in that dark blue area, that's for some pockets of the southwest as well as for the southern plains, the uh, the central uh, Gulf Coast, and then also into the southeast where we expect your first frost in the first half of November. Now, this is where we're starting to get into some of the areas where even in a normal winter, you're only going to get one or two or three uh, frosts the entire winter, so you're not going to see too many and your average first one uh, would be in the latter half of November, so fairly late uh, in the in the uh, in the fall time frame, even almost closer to winter by that point, where we're dealing with our first frost. If you live in much of California, especially uh, anywhere uh, away from the southwestern corner, then through parts of Nevada, Arizona, as well as another stripe from Texas through Louisiana, some parts of coastal Mississippi and Alabama, and then into northern Florida as well as southeastern Georgia. December 1st through 31st uh, in this yellow shade and again these areas see rare frost so it's not very common you'll see this again maybe just a couple times for the entire winter uh, but when you do see them uh, it is definitely significant since the since a lot of people aren't used to having them uh, down there so it can, it can cause issues especially again with farming or with gardens uh, since it can it can catch people off guard so if you get an alert for a frost advisory or a freeze warning definitely take it seriously especially if you have any plants or crops uh, outside your house. December 1st through 31st in this area for Central Florida, Southern Louisiana, Southern Texas, also into parts of California and Arizona. And then rare or no freeze uh, in these areas in southern Florida and the southernmost tip of Texas. But it does happen occasionally that they do get a freeze or a frost within these spots. Now, this is my forecast for whether I think it will be earlier or later, mainly based on the temperature patterns uh, that we're expecting through the fall. I'm expecting it to be slightly earlier if you live within parts of the Great Lakes and along the East Coast. Over the past couple of years, we've actually seen most of the first frosts uh, in these areas come in uh, September, uh, even in parts of the, in some of these areas that average them in October. Uh, and it, if you average it in November, usually it was pushed back uh, to October over the past couple of years. So it has been a little bit earlier uh, over some recent years. And I think that trend will probably continue considering that we are expecting, especially for the latter half of October, to go into a bit of a colder pattern in parts of 
of uh, the East Coast and the Gulf, uh, the uh, the Great Lakes and parts of the Ohio Valley. So I think those areas will get it a little bit earlier than normal. But again, I don't think it'll be too significant. I think it's only going to be a cut on a couple days away from the average. So I don't think you're going to see anything too anomalous in terms of the first frost date. Here's where I'm expecting it to be slightly later, and you can see that covers a big majority of the west, and then kind of fingering in through parts of the central plains. This is where I'm expecting it to be a couple days or a few days later uh, than normal. I think mainly because of the warmer temperatures that we're expecting for late August, which is going to impact some parts of the Rockies, uh, and then into September and October for the rest of the West. I think it will be warmer than normal, uh, and even in some parts of the Southwest that only get it as we get into November, I think it would still be either near normal temperatures or uh, maybe even a little bit above normal by that time. So either way, I think temperatures will be above normal it's going to take a little bit longer uh, to get your first frost if you live within that area and I'm expecting it to be significantly later or noticeably later if you live in the northwest uh, or into parts of uh, the central Pacific coast, I guess you could say, for northern California, northern Nevada, and the surrounding areas. Uh, and I think this is probably going to be where you're looking at 10 or more days later than normal. Uh, one of the reasons is because a lot of these areas average it into August, early, uh, late August, and also September, as well as some areas in the Pacific Northwest averaging it in October. All of those areas, all of those, uh, all of that time frame, I think will be above normal in temperatures. So for that reason, I think it will be fairly noticeable that these first frost dates are a little bit later than normal uh, into those spots. So that is going to wrap it up for today's video. And with that, that is wrapping up the past seven days uh, where we've had a stretch of all long range forecasts. I hope you guys all did enjoy uh, those videos. If you haven't already checked out all of them, make sure you go do that. It's on my channel and you can check them out uh, and it's on my recent uploads. Uh, we did, again, my August forecast, my fall forecast, my fall foliage forecast, my winter forecast, total snowfall forecast, first snowfall forecast, and now we have your first frost forecast. So hopefully you guys en did enjoy the last week of fairly uh, active long-range forecasts. We're going to go back to the regular videos where we talk about the current weather uh, and sometimes the medium to long range. Uh, so hopefully you guys did enjoy all these videos. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll be responding to all of them within a few hours of you posting them uh, and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye